first started driving, I wasn't allowed to go down that road. Like, really? Yeah, my Damn. mom was like, absolutely, you were not allowed to drive down that road, like, at all. Wow. Uh, because there were so many bad accidents, like, so many people died, like, there were so much, like, shady stuff. We have because I had a friend in high school that died on that road. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, so she was like, you, you cannot drive down. Like, this is the furthest I could go up, it was this part right here. But the underwater archaeology base for North Carolina is actually those buildings over oh. there. I had an internship with those, and that's the one that I thought that I blew up the cannonball in and freaked out and ran outside and realized I just had to bust <laughs> in the real big. I have many fun stories. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to use that. Ah, <laughs> uh, look at all of this. Great. Say hi, friends. Hi, hi friends. I'm Ashley Paget. I have a master's degree in anthropology, concentrations in archaeology. I have been a practicing hedge witch for the last 15 or so years, and I'm here tonight in more in that capacity. I've been working with the spirits out here for about three years now. My name is John Paget. Um, I also have a degree in anthropology from UNCW, and for a short time, I had an internship with the underwater archaeology branch at Fort Fisher. Um, so it's the home office for the uh, North Carolina State Underwater Archaeology. So all the people who go down to like Blackbeard Ship and all that kind of fun stuff. I worked with them for a little while uh, processing some artifacts specifically from Fort Fisher. As far as um, I guess tonight would be concerned, I'm good at kind of contextualizing all of the bits of data that we find, finding the data stream, how it all connects together. Uh, I love research. So being able to say like, okay, this is conjecture. This is a logical fallacy and this is oh we're actually getting punched in the face by a spirit i'm also a voodoo and contra practitioner so similar to ashley uh i've not been working with spirits here but working with spirits period communication uh conjecture things like that and actual work with them is kind of my natural milieu as it is so hopefully i can toss some fun stuff in tonight my name is Rebecca, and I'm just along for the ride tonight with these hooligans. <laughs> I guess I'm filming, and this this wasn't entirely my idea to come down here. We had talked about it for a long time, so rather than this being the scientific part that you've seen before, it's going to be more of the spiritual seance-esque part of the spiritual. You're doing a great job. You know what, if anything, if anything with this episode, it's it doesn't have to be so serious when you're talking to the spirits because remember, they used to be people just like you, we are nowadays. So uh, here's to this episode being whatever it's going to be. <laughs> Proud of you, honey. <laughs> Can you tell us, like, where are we right now? Oh, are you actually recording? Middle of where the fort used to be. So up there, you still see a little bit of the earthworks. Um, it went out to the ocean um, and then came all the way down to about where the aquarium is down that way. So it was in the big shape of a seven. Um, over the last, you know, 200 years or so, it's been eroded greatly. So the only little bit left is the top of the seven. Um, but uh, roughly, if I remember right, about a quarter mile out that way. Um, if it's really low tide and it's really bright, so you can actually see where the ocean is a little bit shallower from where it, you know, it used to be. There's so many shipwrecks like up and down there. And then I know, um, up that way, there's an outcrop of Coquino rock. Um, th there's actually, if it's super low tide again, like, you know, full moon, new moon, um, type thing, uh, you can actually see a part of the shipwreck sticking out. I don't know if it's still there after all the hurricanes that we've had, uh, but. Yeah, there's dozens of shipwrecks and everything um, all around here, all related to Fort Fisher. How oh. about we... Do you want to walk over? Yeah, let's walk the over there. Yeah, yeah. and... Um... <coughs> wow, Jay. Is it recording? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. 
You know, some people, in order to get spirits to be reactive, they go in and they start yelling at them in order to react. We're just going to laugh a lot. Yeah. We're just going to invite them in to have a good time. I yeah. Mean, literally, hey, come hang with us and just goof off. Do you think any of the guys who came down here like went to the beach for the enjoyment of it or do you think like they would have just I mean I would imagine that, like given the horrible conditions down here like on the river like we've been complaining about mosquitoes all night you know I can only imagine putting what almost 2,000 people you know out here yeah living in camp and everything yeah to know what outside of where the fort you know would be and yeah so it went Straight out this way, and then straight on down. So. Interesting. But trees out here, you know? Yeah. Think? And that's it? He just he hangs? Just, yeah, he watches. Like, yeah. I can feel him interacting with other spirits. Definitely. But but he just watches. And it's not like a sense of malice or anything. No, just, it's just observation. Yeah, yeah. that's like his <laughs> observe and report. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of what he does. We found witches that's in the woods. We don't know what they're doing, but they're in the woods. They're doing witchy things. So you said that Scout was, he's already here? Like he's yeah, already no, hanging out? Scout was like in the trees. Yeah. I didn't know that they were over here doing that. So he's been watching them. He's been watching them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and they're, they're, they're lighting like candles and here. stuff? Yep. I'm wondering, since they're down here and we don't know what their purpose is, mm -hmm. um, to not have an overflow of witches in one place, <laughs> should we go down to the point? Yeah, uh, yeah so we can go down to Battery Buchanan, uh -huh. um, which is a single earth um, mound that's very, very, very tip of the Hanover County. Um, and that's actually where they surrendered uh, Fort Fisher at. One of the common apparitions that's supposedly seen down here a lot, there's a uh, commonly seen the uh, the general on his horse, um, supposedly common sighting. I've never been uh, lucky enough to actually see. I've gotten a few interesting pictures out here. Before. You lie. I've never seen it. Okay, so you've never seen it. Yeah. But that was um, during one of our first experiences down here with the spirits. We got in touch with two spirits and they said, okay, bring us uh, bring us some rum and bring us some tobacco and, uh, and, and it'll be good, it'll be good. Right, so we set that up, set up, you know, a time frame that I need to be done by, and got the stuff, came out, sat on the beach, you know, lit my uh, offering of tobacco, poured my booze in the cups. So you spirit shop, uh, oh, I'm like, what do you mean, oh, oh, I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I feel one of them running off towards where the museum is, you know, towards that area. And I'm getting the sense that someone was not told something. So, okay. So I'm like, okay, great. I got the guards who were making a deal <laughs> for a bribe and no one thought it would follow through. So the next thing I know, I feel this big energy pop up over the dunes behind me. I'm like, what in the world is this? and uh, felt it out and definitely not human i'm like oh oh my god it's 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 a horse why is there a horse out here well i mean i guess there should be a horse out here but i before coming down and doing this i didn't read into any of it because i didn't want to be primed right yeah so so i feel this horse and i'm like ah and i feel this very stern and kind of angry person 
come up with that horse. And I'm like, so I don't know your name, but I'm going to call you the general. <laughs> and um, from, from that, you know, from that point on, we had very terse discussions about who I was, what the heck I was doing on his beach, uh -huh. and, uh, and whether or not I would be leaving very soon, which we worked it out. He liked my moxie, so he let me stay. Ashley has given us burdock. Mm -hmm. You can't see, but it's written on there. And it is meant for protection, and we put it into our pockets. Yep. Which I don't have any pockets, so I'm going to put it in my bag. Yeah. There you go. Which you can't see, but you're going to have to believe. No, burdock so. root is great. Burdock root is, um, if you think about things in terms of like acidic and alkaline, it doesn't mean anything about it, but uh, if you think about it in those terms, burdock is very alkaline, it's very grounded. You root yourself, you give yourself the rooting to be able to put up those walls and most importantly, hold them. That personal power, that protection is vital. Burdock does a good job of that. We are in the parking lot of the last stand of the Confederacy here at Fort Fisher. Not entirely, but part of it. Wait, where are we? T tell, tell us history, man. <laughs> oh, there it is. Hey. Battery Buchanan. <laughs> oh, I, I can't see that, but I'm going to believe yes. it's there. It says Battery Buchanan. It does. Tour stop. You're just going to have to believe us that it's there. Here, we'll get right back. <laughs> <laughs> that's really deep grass, and that's really scary. <laughs> oh, we got crabs. Crabs. Oh, guys. Yeah, we got to watch out for the fiddlers. I'm sorry, baby. I don't mean to Crabs. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very careful on this because yeah. there's a lot of holes. Yeah. And they come up very soon. <laughs> John just took this photo. We have a friend. You see Several. That? Yeah. Several. We have a few. And we haven't even super started anything yet. We just. It's the rum. <laughs> it's <Yes>. the rum. <laughs> so it's apple cider, uh, ginger beer, booze. Tapioca syrup and cinnamon. That sounds delicious. And it's, apparently we have a friend over there too. That's the recipe for butter beer. That's which we amazing. thought would be delicious and not something often given to the people out here. Hey. <laughs> because I mean I'm sure people come out here with like sangrias and beer yeah. and stuff. So like so one of one of the experiences that I have with spirits is um they just they, they want to be able to sense something again you know so like even if it's you know i guess sharing my form while i'm performing a task you know it's you know oh my god this is what walking feels like again you know or this is what this tastes like again you know so so i thought if i brought something that was you know maybe something they were somewhat familiar with with the apple cider aspect of it but a little bit different yeah you know it might be a good experience for them Jay setting up the tech as he do. Okay, we should be good as long as we just let's pick a spot and then I'll finagle around that. Okay. Got it. I've been keeping it for like eight years. Oh wow. Yeah. You just brought it out tonight? Yep. I was like, it is time. Oh my goodness. I feel so special. <laughs> so what what makes it um for work with Hermes? Um so blue communication, um to brown for grounding. Um, he's kind of a good earth sky deity, especially with his background as um, Ningishita in Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. um, also, I've kept it on his altar for all these years. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it felt like it would be kind of a charge tonight, tonight, which we've already seen a little bit of. What I'm, what I'm going to be doing or what I'm, you know, doing right now with them kind of talking to you guys is I'm putting out my um, kind of like my energetic radar <laughs> to see um, who and what I feel um, to get a feel for, you know, the land, for the spirits of, of you know, the land that's been manifested here, you know, right. over time. We know from the orbs and feelings that, um, that we have some energies, you know, wandering around and I'll see who I can pull or invite in. Now, not all of my stuff is vocal. I'm narrating right now. Sure. Um, but I might just, you know, kind of tune out for That's a fine. second. Yeah. <laughs> so, presence I'm sensing. Um, she's 
back about he's back about 12 feet um Closer to John. Yeah. Yeah, but she's kind of yeah, at yeah. us. Um, she, she is interested in him. <laughs> I mean, not in that way, but but like, what are you doing? Friendly fellow. Yeah. <laughs> um, she might honestly recognize him from when he did his, his archaeology out here. So she's... She's about mid-40s. Um wearing dark garb. Honestly, it looks like a, a Victorian-esque sort of morning get-up. Um, so what I'm getting is that she kind of, she wanders around here. She's kind of a morning figure. Um, and, and I say that in like, she's, I think that she's come here, if I'm translating the the feelings that I'm getting because they're not exactly words they're just emotions and kind of flashes of images in my mind's eye that I'm then like translating to I believe this is what is going on I believe that she um is out is out here for respect for multiple soldiers a brother and others I'm getting like graveyard wreath mm -hmm. statues. She doesn't feel stuck, but it feels like this is where she chooses to spend time. She's a little more interested in what John's doing with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to ask him. <laughs> I don't know that he, can, that, that he can hear her though. All right, so she's entertained. Um, try to reach out to someone else. So I do feel a more soldierly presence that's attached to her. I mean, as not attached as in like in a bad way, but like there's a, a yeah, accompanying, accompanying like uh, like um, as you know, a man would a woman in that time. Yeah. You know, someone to protect and make sure that they're you know their presence is not <laughs> their person is not accosted if you would um that one is younger um late teens early 20s dark hair little smirk <laughs> but also very serious. <laughs> like the kind of seriousness that you see in a puppy that's been told to guard something for the first time, <laughs> you know, which is honestly really heartbreaking. He doesn't want to leave her, but he's acknowledged her presence, which is good. He doesn't think that we're going to do something bad. <laughs> Not like the, okay, thank you. What? Not like those witches over there. Oh, well, it's yeah. yeah no and and not saying not saying that they were doing anything bad because uh, we don't know them we don't know what they were up to yeah. you know it's it's witchcraft isn't by nature bad it's just no. you know cultural content the cultural context of that time is it wouldn't have been looked upon very favorably favorably yeah um, other than the outliers that that were interested, you know, mostly in John, there's there's not a lot of activity out here. Yeah. Um, like it's I said, all up it, on the dune. huh? It's all up on the dune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're waiting. Oh, they're waiting for us to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that might be part of it too. They might not be letting anyone come out here to us. Should we shift? We've come back over to the ocean. You can probably hear it because Ashley was getting a sense that uh, what you were saying, more people were actively like, come on over here. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We so we were over at Battery Buchanan and 
there there were things out there but they weren't interested in talking to us very much and you were saying what they were just telling you like they don't even like going out there yeah they don't even like going out there at least the ones that are speaking up now <laughs> like no that's that's the scary place we don't like that <laughs> wow all right <laughs> so we're not at the scary place anymore yeah they're not ashamed to admit that either so that i guess that might say something. <laughs> Thank you. I better put my hand down. Oh, so much better. Yes. Oh. that is a factor in uh, spirit communication is if they know how to project. <laughs> Otherwise we get white noise like the ocean and we kind of have to, to guess there's a little bit more, um, there's a little bit greater confounders. We'll just go with that. This is where the spirits that I know better hang out um, as I was telling them earlier they're they're more cognizant um they know that they've been dead um they're aware enough that they've um they've at least caught up with the times in some you know way you know so they are using our modern vernacular because they've learned our modern vernacular and part of it too is my translation style before we started this venture um Rebecca and Jay asked me to um, put feelers out and see if anyone had known Yancy, her great, 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 yes? I think it's just great, great. Two great. great, great. Yeah. Two greats, two greats, we got it. Um, great, great grandfather. We long in our family, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good genes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ask if anyone had known him. They said they might have known. Um, they say it's difficult for them to know for sure, so maybe if we talk to them a little bit, we might get some, you know, get some more information. Um, so again, Yancey was, so he was, he would have been early 20s, I think. I believe he was newly married at the time that he signed up. Okay. Um, he was in I say the 42nd Infantry Company A. Um, I think at that point he had not had any children yet. Okay. Granted, I understand that's all not, that wouldn't have happened here anyway. Uh, um, he came from the center of the state near the Piedmont. It's either Randolph or uh, Davidson County. He signed up with a bunch of his cousins. I believe all of them were farmers. One might have been a blacksmith at one point. And he was captured during the first battle. So what, was that Christmas, I think, when that happened? Might have been. Uh, Christmas of 1865. Because the second battle was in January. Right. But yeah, he was one of the few captured, and they sent him to Point Lookout in Maryland after okay. that. Which okay. he survived and went back to North Carolina and started making babies. Yes. You said one was a blacksmith, right? One of the cousins? Might have been, because blacksmith does run through my family on that side. Okay. So it's possible that one of them may have been a blacksmith as well. Okay. Because I got I got a pink from one of them for the blacksmith. I knew a blacksmith. <laughs> I imagine they needed one here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I knew that one. <laughs> I had to visit a blacksmith a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of things broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things were breaking all the time. Uh, their salt water wasn't good for it, so they, yeah. God so, forbid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and that's the thing. I I don't know if he would have been like a bro. I don't know if he would have been like the cool guys. Yeah, I, I yeah, wonder yeah. If he would have been 
because no, it wasn't that side of the family that was Primitive Baptist. Um, um, but if he was, he wouldn't. Supposedly, I'm not one to judge what people do. Yeah. yeah. But he wouldn't have been drinking or smoking or gambling or right. anything like that. But so, um, so I don't know if I'm getting it from them. Um, but I am kind of. What what color was his hair? Was it blonde? I might be getting someone else, but. I think what my grandpa's hair is uh because he only ever, ever saw him with white hair no he had dark hair he had dark hair yeah okay, okay. so they're yeah they're thinking of someone else they're like they're like this guy that that was kind of off to himself he had blonde hair was that him i mean and that's how that conversation went yeah <laughs> yeah and i don't know uh like i don't know what he looked like i don't think we have any photos of him or anything like that okay i wish i had a photo that'd be so amazing I think he was too poor. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was too poor. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. A lot of us were poor, you know, was commiseration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he likely was, I know he went back to the farm, yeah. which I mean, you could be a blacksmith and a farmer, sure. I may be wrong, but I'm not, I'm not getting intuitively that he's here. I don't think so. Yeah. That's the thing, I don't imagine him coming back here after dying. Yeah. He, he died not here, not at camp, but he lived long enough to see the kids grow up. I'm not entirely sure what he died of or what year that was. Yeah. But, nah, I don't, I don't think he's here. Yeah. Different loyalties, someone said. Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. Just, just not, this isn't what he wanted. He wasn't a career yeah. military Not person. A career yeah, soldier. Yeah. yeah. This I think, was for a specific goal, but yeah. it yeah. was never the end goal. Yeah. He signed up maybe like two or three months before the official North Carolina draft. Yeah. But it was also what you did. I mean, I know all of them, like all the cousins, the brothers, they all got together and like, all right, you know, like this is what we do now. Yeah. Uh, but I also think you know, talk about not being in it, right? Right. How did he get captured? One of like six dudes. <laughs> like, what was he doing? Where was he at? Was he like peeing somewhere? Like, what <laughs> happens? You guys get captured. What's going on inside the fort when everybody's like, oh man. Like, oh man. Oh crap. They're they, going to tell us everything. <laughs> they got Bartlett, Yancey, Willard. <laughs> One of them says, I don't blame him for not coming back. You know. Yeah. Some of us are stuck here and some of us choose to be here. Yeah. Uh, one of them goes, honestly, I think he would have been the sort to move on. Yeah. Is is what another one was saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you watched his family grow up, right? Right. So why would he stay? Yeah. Right. Granted, that's an interpretation. Well, yeah. That's. Uh, like I said, a lot of what what I'm pulling right now is interpretation. Yeah. You know, I am getting strong indications of, oh, this is what we feel about that. I have a question. Yes. For the guys. Okay. There's cheering. Okay. <laughs> like, Attention! It's like, done finding my dude. Okay. <laughs> uh, why join? Why join the Confederacy? Why join the Army? One. Money. All right. <laughs> that was a <laughs> immediate and derisive money. Um, Did that even come through, though? Was there pay before the, they lost? I mean, the one that said money, um, I gave, I have the, I was given the intuition that the, that he sent it off. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that he like remitted it to his family. Yeah. Exactly. That's just why he was here. Um, so it's, I, I got what I was issued and that's, or I got what I issued or, or, or what I could come by here and everything else I sent. Okay. Um, um, one of the, one of the more noble feeling ones, um, he said he didn't 
want um, he didn't want his daughter to grow up in a in a war, so he wanted to, to be able to help end it. That was why he wanted to join. Um, trying to see if I can coax anyone else to speak up because they've gotten a little bit pensive. One of them agrees, family. He doesn't want to say anything about it. Um, as jovial as they are, there doesn't seem to be a guts and glory, you know, mood about them. You know, it, it wasn't a, yeah, we're doing this because the union, yeah. you know, rah, 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 they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're trying to steal our way of life. It, it was, it was personal. It was very personal and very local things. There, there were things that either they, they needed to provide for or they needed to protect. Yeah. The personal reasons for joining a war are huge. They're valid. Yeah. But what about the wider message? of the war as a whole, especially historically. If they've been tuning into history after the fact, how about the wider scope of the war as a whole? Um, That's a sticky question. I yeah, know. no, 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 no. Um, these ones, um, I'm getting one that said they didn't really think about it. Um, they didn't really They couldn't, they, they knew that things were going on on a wide scale, but they couldn't really wrap their head around it, you know, about, you know, something being so big and action being so big. Similarly to the Iraq war. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, we, we, at the time, everybody was like, oh, this is about, you know, fighting terrorism. But, but then in hindsight, so it was nebulous. about yeah. oil. Yeah. Yep. And the people who were fighting over there didn't get a chunk of that oil. No. So. On either side. Yeah. And that's just that we were roped into the nationalism, not patriotism, nationalism of right after 9 11, that right, kind of. Yeah. Well, the war on terror, we're going to fight terrorists where they stand. I'm like, but what does that mean? Yeah. But it doesn't matter because people were about. Yeah. And I, I would imagine there was a similar kind of fervor, at least on a local level. Yeah. For. I imagine. Fort Sumter would have been like the terrorism. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, that kicked it off. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's, someone goes, it's just fear of family. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the wider scope didn't matter because there was so much going on. There was so much to fear for the people that they cared about. Yeah. You know? It was, you, we weren't those people is what it, is what it, I'm getting. We weren't those people that were that were higher up, that were, you know, at the center of things, that knew everything that was going on. We, we were here for our people, yeah. you know. And yeah, there was there was a, a bit of, of, you know, we don't know what's going to happen if they win, but we know what we are. I think about my family, and if they're being told by their government, by the news, hey, they're coming for your farm, they're gonna get your farm, going to come down here and get your farm, even though they weren't slave owners. Right. Like, to be told, you're going to lose what you have. Yeah. And granted, on the wider scale, yeah, some people had people. But, on the smaller scale, which was most people, um, it's just the very basic things that we try to have now, like houses, families, land. Yeah. Water, food, yeah. Basic comforts. Yeah. A blanket. A blanket. Someone said, a blanket. I'm with you. A blanket. <laughs> <laughs> but the good kind that your mom makes. Like the quilts. Yeah. Like quilts. quilts. I was trying to be like quilts. Yeah, the good kind that your mom makes is, is what is what the one soldier is pining for. That might be the same one that wants pie. <laughs> <laughs> he wants pie and a quilt. I'm for this guy. <laughs> I don't know, but the energy is cuddly. <laughs> I just get this image of some guy like curled up in a quilt with like pie. Yeah, eating it with a spoon.
spoon. Yes. He liked to spoon. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. That's what. That's his memory. <laughs> that's the exact memory. Is like curled up in a comfy spot, probably his bed, with a quilt thrown over his shoulders and a pie tin with a fork with a pie that's all for him. This man's after my heart. <laughs> If you make the pie, I'll be that guy for you. <laughs> I need to figure out how to make a Quaker quilt for you. There you, know? you go. <laughs> <laughs> make me a quilt. <laughs> Watch out, you might get a suitor. <laughs> I, I don't know how to make a quilt yet. I don't know how much of a suitor I'd be right but now. try! <laughs> There's this... I don't know how well aware they are, but I'm sure they've seen a few, I wouldn't be surprised if they've seen a few uh, stars and bars out here recently. Um, but I'm curious what their feelings are on this kind of neo-Confederate appeal right now, but with it being so steeped in what is the union? Like, how does that, it's kind of a hard question to ask because it's like you have all these people who are so diehard United States people right um, flying the Confederate flag like what does that mean like what is their take on this kind of resurfacing of southern heritage and what does southern heritage mean within the context of history too yeah I'd imagine so if they're around they they know how things shook out and how continue to shake out right so so for one they said kind of sternly um if they want if they want to fly the colors so badly they need to fight in a war first oh where are you at <laughs> Give me a high five. he's like right here over yes. his shoulder behind adam ah. yeah he's like if you want to fly those colors then you need to fight in a war first to know what it means to fly those colors he was on it. Hmm. <laughs> he also said, my name's Jameson. How you doing? Hi, Jameson! <laughs> yeah. What else? That one's a bit fired up. <laughs> I like you, Jameson. He's like, I'm not Pie Man. I'm sorry. I know you're not Pie Man. <laughs> With the guys who are around us, I mean, are they all Confederate or do we got some Union folks? I mean, have they settled things since so, everything? Or? I get... Oh, dear. No, no, no. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Where's Jameson? No. <laughs>
We're gonna be flashing up a bunch of things that you should check out right here, like maybe subscribe, like maybe our Patreon, like maybe our social media, like maybe all that stuff. You should definitely check it out. All right, thank you so much for watching and tune in next time.